so we may wait another minute to join. All right. Hello, everyone. We want to welcome you to our Seabird University in 2022. And um, we are um, presenting today the Seabird process of servicing and calibration of our SBE 37. The presenter today will be me. So I am Natalie Kiel. I'm the service manager of Seabird GmbH in Germany. Um, I started to work at Seabird um, in 2015, so I'm working for seven years now, and I'm responsible for all the administration and work. Hello, uh, my name is Tobias Kiebel. I am the senior technician for Seabird GmbH, and I'm working here since uh, 11 years now. Yeah. All right, we will walk you through the process today. So this is our agenda. Um, we are starting with the goods receiving and inspection. Afterwards, we will show you how to set up and check in the instruments. Um, afterwards, we'll uh, show the pressure calibration, then the post -cal and final calibration. And for the last thing, the final and return of the instrument. And then we will have some time for your questions and answers. All right, so when we got the instruments from our goods receiving, we will unpack the unit, of course, and the first thing we do is the visitor inspection, which is really important. We first check the tram probe and um, how the condition is it is, it is um, of that part, uh, the cell as well, and uh, how the condition um, of the antifallens are, or are there any? And for the last thing, how the connector is looking like. Afterwards, we were setting this instrument up in our system, and then it is ready to go through our service and calibration process. Okay, uh, now I will take over and walk you through the um, complete service process of the units. Um, at first, um, we are doing a basic check-in. We are doing this for every kind of unit. Um, and here we are doing a more detailed visual inspection of the unit, like we are checking the pins of the connector, if they are corroded, or we are doing a, like before the temperature and conductivity cell check, just to make sure this one is ready for the calibration so it doesn't flood in the bath. Um, here you can see we are first removing the battery pack from the unit, so the customer battery pack. Normally the, the customer shouldn't sense the batteries installed. So then we are installing our own in-house batteries. So we don't use the um, customer batteries. We only have to do this for three pins or IM models. You can see we are removing those. Um, and after that, we are re removing the old anti-fall devices. So the anti-fall device doesn't go into the bathes. We have to wait a little bit for the video. You can see we are checking the O-ring surfaces too, if there are some scratches.
So now that's the step for removing the antifollins. We have to remove the um, cell guard from the units. And on this step, we are always checking the conductivity cell if it's broken or bent. So we can check this before the calibration. So here you can see we are installing now um, the pressure plug for the pressure calibration. That's a special adapter for our system. We have to fill it with water so there's no air inside. And we are always cleaning the pressure plug so the hole is really, um, there's no dirt inside. Okay, so after the step is done, um, we are doing a basic um, DSDC in it's called inside here. We are um, uh, um, saving the customer settings. So we are able to change the settings back at the end of the service. So this, the customer always gets the sensors back like he sent it to us. So for this, we have to connect it to the PC and communicate with the unit. We just have to save the DS command and the DC command. Okay, after that, we are um, typing in all the informations in our internal um, system. So we are checking um, if the um, temperature sensor is correct, if it's broken or bent, if you have to repair it or if the connector is okay. So we are typing it all into the informations. So we don't forget anything. That we always include if the customer sends better with it, so he always gets his battery back.
So after this one, we are doing, um, we are planning it for the calibration. We have our internal software. We can include the, the sensor into the software. So we know um, on which place it's calibrated and we can uh, use them later in our software, the calibration software. Okay, so and after these steps, the unit is ready for the first um, calibration. It's for the pressure calibration. If the sensor has a pressure calibration, it always goes through the step. And for this one, we have two different ways to do a pressure calibration. The first way is we are doing it by hand. So it's a manual dead weight tester and we, can do, we are doing it up to 1000 PSI. If the sensor has a pressure sensor from 1000 to 10,000 PSI, we are using a automated pressure calibration. Um, for pressure calibration, we are taking um, nine different points, and these points are going from atmospheric pressure to the highest pressure point and back to the atmospheric pressure. Here you can see we are simulating the pressure with weights, so it's with dead weight tester. And after the calibration, now we have two points for each pressure point. And this one you will get always as a PDF after the calibration is done. I think the video stopped. So for every point, we have um, special weights. So we can simulate the pressure. So you can see now we are taking the measurements from the unit and we are always taking the um, pressure information from our digi reference sensor. And we are doing that for every pressure point. Okay, so after the pressure calibration is done, the sensor will be ready for the T and C calibration, so temperature and conductivity calibration. We're able to run um, 16 units per day. So we have two baths and we can run eight units in one bath. So for the post calibration or maybe final calibration, um, we have to first set up our sensors for the calibration. So we have to hook up them to the PC and make a setup for the coefficients, uh, not for the coefficients, for the setups. Um, during this time, we are heating up the bases to 36 degrees. So the water can degas for a while. So we don't have any air bubbles inside the bath. And during this time, we always um, installing some bottles in, um, in the bathes so we can take samples during the calibrations. So after some time, we are able to um, load the units into the bathes like you see in the video. And we let them sit in the warm water like around three hours. So, and during this time, we can shake the units in the bath. So there will no be bubbles left into the conductivity cell because the conductivity cell, if there are bubbles inside, that will completely distort the calibration result. And during this time, we are um, setting up the, uh, the salinity we need for the calibration. And after three or four hours, we are able to close the bath and we can start the calibration. The calibration runs around 12 to 14 hours. It depends on the units. For example, IM units taking long because we are only able to communicate with one unit at a time. So the calibration is running through night over seven temperature points. 
we have to stabilize the bath for one hour for each point, and then we can calibrate the unit for 10 minutes. So at the next day, we are able to do um, a reference, uh, the reference calibration with our salinometer. For this one, we are needing the samples we took overnight during the, uh, each temperature point. And if this one is done, we are able to sorting the data and creating the coefficients, the new coefficients for the units. We are also creating the reports for the units. Um, these are the reports you're always getting as PDF for each calibration, for example, for the post calibration and for the final calibration. After this, we are always doing, um, we have to install, um, include the new coefficients into the sensor. And after that, we are doing a single point check just to make sure the coefficients are working fine. Okay, so now then we are setting back the customer um, settings into the sensor. So the customer gets a sensor back like he sent it to us. And then we are able to unload the baths and rinse them with fresh water so there's no salt inside the units. And now the unit would be ready for packing. Or for example, here it's optional for new antifall devices if it's needed. Okay. And now I will hand back to Natalie for the next steps. All right. We wait a couple of seconds when the video is over to go to the other slide. Right. Um, then um, my job is there again. Um, we'll check all the sheets uh, which uh, the technicians have created, like the calibration sheets, the pressure tests, and create the service report afterwards. It is really important uh, that we'll completely check the sheets if uh, the data is right, if the right serial number is shown, and uh, of course that all paperwork is completed. Then um, the service report is created so the customer can see all the work we have done and the work um, he'd like to us to do, uh, be done. So uh, this is comparing that the customer knows um, what uh, the service has included. So maybe you can go just to the next slide. There you can see an example of uh, the service report. Just one more, please. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, and afterwards, when we have all paperwork together, we will create a zip file for the customer and email that to them so that they are now in advance, okay, the instruments are coming back and they can already check uh, the whole paper sheets and also the files which are coming um, inside that email and he or she is aware that the instrument is going to be shipped. After this is done, we will pack the instrument in the wooden box or in anything else which um, uh, they came in. Um, and um, of course, we will um, pack them safe uh, that uh, they are um, coming back to the customer like they should. Afterwards, we bring that to our shipping area and send the instruments out again. Now the process is over. And we have some time for your questions and answers. I guess you can type in, in the little question box if you have any.
if you may have any question after this session, you can write us an email, of course, too. We are happy to help. It looks like we have one question. Um, I have questions about fixed deployment orientation. Will that be covered in this presentation? Okay, I think there's no fixed deployment included within this um, presentation. So that would be a case for an email if you'd like to. Great, thank you, Max. All right, it seems we don't have any further questions. So I really like to thank you for your watching and for your time. And I hope you have a nice day today. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you.